I've said it before and I'll say it again now. The one thing that I think everybody can agree on is that they love a good feud, no matter how old it is, how many times it's been talked about. Everybody can always get into it, especially if it's a good one. And today, I figured it would be fun to revisit one of the best feuds of all time uh, in the music world, the legendary Iron Maiden versus Sharon Osbourne saga and the disastrous San Bernardino show on OzFest 2005, which would be Maiden's last show on the tour. Here we go. Two thousand and five was not only another year with a great Ozfest lineup, but it was also the touring festival's tenth anniversary, featuring Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, obviously. Uh, which, by the way, on that tour, they were uh, specifically focusing the set list on their first four records: uh, Mudvayne, Rob Zombie, so many cool bands, as well as uh, the band A Dozen Furies, who were the winners of the Battle for Ozfest reality show competition. The tour also featured Velvet Revolver, uh, who would take over for Maiden as they were unavailable for the last seven dates of the tour. Uh, and everybody knew that going into it. The uh, Velvet Revolver didn't replace them because of what happened towards the end of the tour, which we'll get into, but that was planned from the get-go. Throughout the entire run, I guess that Iron Maiden frontman Bruce Dickinson uh, had allegedly been taking jabs at both Ozzy and Sharon throughout the entire tour, uh, while he was on stage during Maiden set, dogging them for their show, The Osbournes, which I think had just uh, wrapped up the finale uh, just a few months before Ozfest kicked off that year, and also uh, taking uh, jabs at Ozzy for using a teleprompter. However, uh, given the time period, there is no footage of Bruce saying any of these things on stage. I was not there. I was only like 10 years old when this was going on, so... That part, I guess, is speculation, but it has been widely documented. Maybe you were there. Let me know. Things would come to a crashing halt on Maiden's last night on the tour, August 20th, 2005 in San Bernardino, California. Immediately upon the band taking the stage, there was an Ozzy chant uh, that was coming through the PA, and the band would be pelted with eggs as they launched into their opening song, Murders in the Rue Morgue, I think it was. In between that and the next song, which was The Trooper, Bruce had this to say on stage while Iron Maiden drummer Nico McBrain was cleaning up his drum kit from the eggs. We are, I've got it all. Uh, I've an abbreviated set tonight. We've got a 55 minute set instead of a one hour show for you. What the fuck? Yeah. But just like this, if you can't try 55, we can't fucking play. Later on during Maiden set, the power would be cut multiple times uh, for the first time, I believe, during The Trooper, which was only the second song of the set, like I said, uh, and then again during Phantom of the Opera and Run to the Hills. Uh, although the tides had kind of turned on Maiden at that point, and not from the crowd, but just from you-know-who, being the pros that they are, they continued the show. Uh, they played the entire set with Bruce making the following statement on stage. I, I'm, I'm only going to play the audio from this clip. as uh, There is video, but it's just basically nothing but black, as I believe uh, whoever was filming it. You know, this is back in 2005. Having cell phones and cameras and stuff like that was 
nowhere near as widely accepted at concerts as it is today. So I'm just going to throw uh, some uh, generic Iron Maiden B-roll over this audio of Bruce on stage. Well, the reason we're here tonight, the reason we're back on stage after some fucking ass wipes, trying to switch our PA off three or four times during the show. The reason we're back here, because somebody, oh, just accidentally on purpose happened to come on with uh, 36 eggs before the show. What an accident. That wasn't planned at all, was it? The reason we're back here tonight, the reason we're back here now, it's because you, the fucking people, demanded a yeah! And there is nothing, there is fucking nothing that will get in between Iron Maiden and the fucking Iron Maiden audience that is here tonight! Yeah! Now, immediately following Maiden's performance, Sharon Osbourne herself took to the stage to say this. Following the wild turn of events that night, an official statement from Sharon Osbourne was later released, which said, quote, From day one, Bruce Dickinson started berating Ozzy and belittling the Ozfest audience. He stated he, quote unquote, didn't need a reality show to give him credibility. We're not just some fucking reunion band. And continuously complained about the sound system, saying that when he comes back to America, he'll have a better one. Longtime Maiden manager Rod Smallwood also had a statement of his own uh, defending his band, of course, which read, uh, it's kind of lengthy, but in part it reads, In 30 years in this business and after attending hundreds of gigs, I have never seen anything anywhere near as disgusting and unprofessional as what went on that night. I was standing on our sound desk out front as usual, but ran to the stage as soon as the hail of missiles began, and from then on watched from the front of the stage right next to Bruce's walkway. The scale, viciousness, and concentration of the throwing made it obvious that this was a premeditated and coordinated attack. Assaulting musicians while performing by throwing bottle tops, lighters, and eggs at them from just a few yards away is vile, dangerous, criminal, and cowardly. It is incredible that Ozfest security apparently did nothing about it. Aren't they there to protect the bands too? Especially when the band is concentrating on a performance in front of 45,000 people and the missiles are coming out of the glare of the spotlights. And to spit at a band on stage is unforgivable. Iron Maiden, like all the bands on Ozfest, had to sign quite onerous legal documents, part of which was promising not to throw anything into the audience even wristbands, ironic, isn't it? It is well documented on the web who is responsible for planning and participating in this attack, and for musicians to join in this assault on other musicians is a shocking disgrace akin to treachery. You should all be thoroughly ashamed of yourselves. We know who authorized the making of the Ozzy, Ozzy chant tape the day before and how it was played secretly through the PA at the very beginning and end of our set. We also know who continually turned off the power, interrupting our set at crucial moments. It is a good thing that the power was turned back on before there was a riot. As you could sense on stage, a lot of the huge audience were getting totally pissed off at this continual onslaught on the band. The great majority of the Ozfest crew throughout the tour were terrific and we thank them. Those who participated or stood idly by and watched as this all went down should also be ashamed of themselves and I would certainly hope they never come near a tour with which we are involved. There is little point in my commenting on the chap with the flag or they're trying to hold up Eddie or Sharon's speech as the audience made their feelings very clear on each occasion. And in the end, what was all this about? If I had any sort of problem or misunderstanding with a band working on a tour we were involved in, I would go and talk to them or their manager, not wait until the end of a tour and assault and ambush them. 
or was that really it? I find it staggering that this ambush would take place in front of any audience, let alone in San Bernardino, the biggest audience of the tour. Didn't that audience merit any consideration? They pay an awful lot to be there in terms of prices for tickets, parking, food, beer, etc. Surely, if they spend this sort of money, they deserve to watch the bands they paid to see be able to put in a full, unhindered performance, free of danger and intimidation. If I had paid, I would ask for my money back. And this audience really were outstanding, giving the band incredible support and many voting with their feet in disgust after the set and the speech, which to many was the final insult. I have to say, I was immensely proud of Maiden, who stood up to it all and showed great courage and just got better and better through the adversity their heads never dropped instead they went on the offensive it was a truly memorable moment when bruce went to the very front of the stage during trooper something which he never normally does as he is usually on the ramps waving the flag whilst avoiding the hail of missiles and yelling this is a fucking british flag and these colors don't fucking run the imperturbable attitude and ability of the band shone through and in the end made this a truly remarkable rock and roll event even if for all the wrong reasons we will have no more to say on this matter except that i do think the band deserve an apology from a number of people and you know who you are i wonder if the maiden song these colors don't run from the a matter of life and death album has anything to do with this uh incident and by the way that record is so underrated in my opinion and the artwork is killer too with the whole military uh military thing awesome real quick i gotta jump in here and give a shout out to mammoth headwear for sponsoring this video because maybe you're like me you have a ginormous head you can't ever find a hat that fits you properly check out mammoth headwear i'm actually wearing their hat right now and it really does fit me like a dream you can go to their website mammothheadwear.com use code logan at checkout for 10% off your order. And it's not just hats either. They got all sorts of stuff, uh, shirts, hats, uh, beanies, hoodies, all sorts of stuff. Mammoth Headwear is the undisputed place to go if you have a massive head like I do. Now, almost a year ago exactly, November of 2022, which is over 17 years since the incident at that point. Now we're, I mean, we're coming up close to 20 years. That's how long this thing's uh, going on. Sharon was still extremely bitter about the entire incident, uh, telling Consequence in a rather lengthy response to their question about the incident, quote, Bruce Dickinson is a fucking prick. Well, no, he's not a prick because a prick's nice. He's a fucking asshole. Because the situation is he was on a tour called Ozfest and Ozzy Osbourne was paying him every night to perform. He accepted the gig. He knew what he was doing. He accepted the gig. And every night he would go on stage and say bad things about Ozzy. And the crew and everybody and all the other bands would be like, are you letting him get away with it? And I'm like, I sure am. But the last gig was just outside of LA and I thought, you motherfucker, now you're going to get it. And so I had about 20 people in the audience and a lot of them were nurses from Cedar sinai because I had cancer at that time and they were all my chemo nurses. And they all came down and they fucking pelted the shit out of him. And my thing is, you play, you pay. Most certainly not referring to OzFest's uh, pay-to-play buy-on model. Anyways. And the thing is, if you're being paid to do a gig, but you don't like the person, then fuck off. But don't stay. Take the money, which I think she said at uh, one point on Howard Stern was like $185,000 a show. Uh, take all the good that's coming to your band through being on a festival, doing 24 shows, and still slagging the person that's paying you. It's like, no, that makes you a fucking asshole. And he is. And he's never apologized. He never even went up and said hello to Ozzy. The thing about him is that he is just so jealous and always has been of Ozzy. And that's his problem. Because the thing is about Bruce Dickinson, he's hugely successful. He's got a great fan base, a great fan base that have been loyal. The band are great guys. All the band are great. And they do great. You know, they're a great band. You can't take it away. And neither would I take that away from them. But the thing about Bruce is he is unknown to the public. Bruce Dickinson could walk into anywhere and nobody would know who the fuck he is. You know what I'm saying? He's a faceless singer to the general public. People aren't scrambling to get him for an interview. And the thing is, he's not interesting. 
But the thing is, Ozzy is original and Bruce isn't, and that's what eats Bruce away. In that same interview, Ozzy was asked whether or not he feels uh, underrated when compared to similar vocalists, including Dickinson, uh, and being the complete gentleman that Ozzy appears to be, he simply replied that while Bruce is a great singer, he is quote-unquote not very nice. Props to Ozzy for taking the high road as he was about the only one uh, as back in 2010, I believe, Zach Wilde was asked by Kanak about the incident where he sort of played devil's advocate by saying, quote, well, the whole thing is ridiculous. What it should have been down to is mom, uh, referring to Sharon, should have just talked with their manager and just said, hey, look, tell your guy to shut the f up. And if he mentions one more thing, you guys are off the tour. That's it. You're done. And if their manager, Rod, went over to them, because they're all f***ing grown-ups, and said, dude, enough of the f***ing bagging on the boss. The boss, of course, being Ozzy. First off, it's their f***ing tour. And that's the end of the conversation. The minute he goes back there and says, oh, f*** this, we don't need a reality TV show, f*** Ozzy, this and that, blah, 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 then you know what? Pull the power on them right there. Have a guy sitting on the side of the stage every f***ing night and the minute he says one bad thing about ozzy break his legs and you're off and you're on your way that's it done he continues it should have never got to eggs if anyone ever threw eggs at me i'd break their legs dude i'd stop the show right there and whoever was throwing the eggs i'd morgue them i wouldn't hospitalize them i'd kill them right there i'm looking at both sides if i was iron maiden i'd fuck some people up and if I find out who's responsible for it, they're getting f***ed up too. I mean, I'd never go up on stage and start bagging on whoever the headliner is. If anything, all I ever do is thank the band for letting us play with them. When I opened up for Ted Nugent and Leonard Skinner, I thought, this is such an honor to be playing with these guys. Why would I say anything bad about them? You know what I mean? And on top of that, you're getting paid. It's so f***ing ridiculous. It's a f***ing joke. I had no idea. I was just like, whatever, man. I'm telling you right now, the way I would have handled it would be, hey, guy, you tell your singer to shut the f*** up or hands down, I'll break his f***ing neck. I'll break his legs first, then I'll break his f***ing neck. Then you'll have no singer, so he can't say shit. Throw eggs? I'll slit his f***ing throat, dude. I'd say, f*** you. F***ing throw eggs? Are you f***ing kidding me? What, are we in second grade here? Come on. Throw eggs? Throw f***ing grenades now, you mother f***er. That whole thing should have just never happened. It should have been, tell him to shut up or the guy's off tour. That's it. Then his manager would have said, dude, enough of the talking, slagging the headlining act. I mean, how old are we here, dude? How old is Bruce Dickinson? You'd expect that out of an 18-year-old, like the Battle of the Bands in high school. Oh my God, I don't think I've ever said fuck so many times. Holy shit. Bruce was asked by NME in a 2018 interview about the incident, uh, and he kind of seemed to have calmed down a little bit about it, referring to it as a quote-unquote storm in a teacup uh, and calling both Ozzy and Sabbath uh, icons. But during a spoken word appearance in 2022, he did manage to throw a little bit of shade at Sharon when he was asked if he thought that Black Sabbath uh, could continue on without drummer Bill Ward, to which he replied, Does Black Sabbath exist without Bill Ward? Well, I don't, it's not a matter of that. I, I, I think Black Sabbath exists at all now, does it? You know? Yes. So I think Sharon's made sure of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this is a huge he said, she said type of thing, and there's not really any footage out there uh, of Bruce saying any of, the, uh, any of these things on stage. Not saying that he didn't, but unless you were there, who really knows? But... Given certain people's reputations, when you take that into account, uh, I think we all know who is mostly the guilty party here. Either way, though, it is a bummer that OzFest is no more. Uh, we don't really have any touring festivals at all anymore. No more Mayhem Fest, nothing. Uh, maybe one day, though, we'll get lucky, get something like that again. Those days were awesome. Definitely miss those days. Much, uh, I, I had a much better time with those types of things than these destination festivals like incarceration or something uh, too much going on at those things for me to bring back the touring festivals uh that said though maiden recently announced a massive 
2024 leg of the future past tour hopefully i can check that out i have not seen the band since 2010 uh, on the Final Frontier Tour with Dream Theater. And also in Maiden-related news, Bruce announced that the first single from his upcoming album, uh, The Mandrake, uh, Mandrake Project, I think the single is called Afterglow of Ragnarok, will be out, uh, I think, December 1st or early December, so be on the lookout for that as well. All right, though, I gotta run. My fiance is waiting for me to pelt myself at her so that I can fertilize her eggs, so I gotta go. But thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks to Mammoth Headwear for sponsoring this video, where you can go to mammothheadwear.com, use code Logan at checkout, for 10% off your order, and I will see you next time.